Hello and welcome back to Metal Machine Shop and to the next instalment of my tilting Velomobile trike project. This time I've managed to get the drivetrain finished so in this video I'm going to show you how I did it and what it looks like. The drivetrain essentially consists of an extremely long bicycle chain. It's in fact made up of about two and a half standard bicycle chains. Uh, the crank and chain rings I've borrowed from my Trek road bike. The tension side of the train runs over these two sprockets which I've adapted from a bicycle cassette and the non-tension side of the train runs over these two supports so the one at the back is a PTFE coated support and the one at the front which is adjustable and allows the chain to be tensioned is also PTFE coated. At the back here I've had to file away a little bit of a recess in the chain stay to give clearance for the chain. Both of the sprockets are designed to float on their shafts so that when a different chain ring at the front is selected there's a little bit of sideways adjustment. If I remove one of the sprockets from the hole in the frame, this is how it works. So there's a steel hollow shaft that I've turned up on the lathe. Uh, there's a mounting for the sprocket. Uh, and I've got these two sort of flanged discs that allow the axle to be secured to the frame. I've not actually drilled the holes through yet. Um, there's one that goes on the other side that supports the outer end of the shaft just to hold it steady on the chassis or the frame. So now I've shown you how it all fits together. The rest of the video shows you the process as I went through to machine and make those parts. We're going to start with the bosses for the sprockets. I'm going to be using my Warco WMT 300 lathe stroke mill machine for this job. Uh, don't use this lathe very often now since I've got the Myford. The reason is because it's quite crude and difficult to adjust the speed and other settings. So not nearly so user friendly. However, it is a lot more powerful than Myford. So if I want to do some rapid metal removal, then this is the machine that I use. Okay, so I've drilled a 10 mil hole right down the center of this piece of bar, and now I'm going to open it out a bit further using a fatter drill. Okay, the spindle speed was a bit high there, but it takes a long time to adjust the settings because of the fiddly belt changes, so uh, ideally I'd have gone a bit slower there, but it's done the job, plenty of swarf. I've now finished making the bits for the idler sprockets. What I've got here is a dismantled cassette and a dismantled freewheel and I'm going to use these sprockets from the cassette for my idlers. So the way this works is this bit here carries the sprocket which is going to fit on like that. It all goes onto the boss more or less like so. Quite a tight fit so a little tricky to assemble. Uh, and then that retaining piece goes to the other side and finally the bearings will be press fitted into the middle here. I'm going to hold all that lot together with the retaining compound which I've got here. And because it's a bit of a tight fit I'm going to press fit it using the milling machine as a press tool. Now I wouldn't recommend this approach for heavy duty work but for light press fits or light push fits the milling machine can be used as quite a good press tool just because of the flatness of the surface under the collet and the general verticality and parallelness of all the parts.
interesting. Now these bearings are not the same size as the ones I used for this one. These are 24 mil diameter, whereas these are 22 mil diameter. So something's gone a bit wrong there. I need to do some investigation and probably order some new bearings. I just had these out of my stock drawer anyway, so I didn't order them specially, but still. Maybe I should have measured them before I did it. Right, I've now got on to making the axles for the sprockets. So I'm going to use an ER32 collet chuck just to turn down the end of this bit of 10mm bar to 8mm to fit the bearings in the sprocket. So here are my two idler axles. The final job I'm going to do is to drill a hole right down the length of the axle and from here till about here to take as much weight as I can out of these parts because they're made of solid steel so pretty heavy. One of my least favourite jobs in the workshop is drilling holes down the ends of rods but on the other hand one of my least favourite aspects of cycling is cycling an overweight bike up a steep hill. Well, that was pretty boring, but it has saved a lot of weight out of these two parts. So I think it was worthwhile. It took me about 10 minutes to complete that job for both of them. So time well spent, I think. So it's a couple of days later and these two ball bearings have just arrived from simplybearings.co.uk so I can now get those pressed into the hole in the centre of the sprocket. Right, the next job is to assemble my three chains into one long chain and adjust the chain so it's the right length uh, and then I can work out where to put the return idlers. There is a chain link provided in each one of these chains. Um, almost threw it away with the packaging but managed to fish it out. So I'll just connect the ends of the first two chains. So the two ends of my two chains haven't joined up so I'm going to get the third chain and stick that one in the gap. I've now got the third bit of the chain in place. I need to break the chain here where that black dot is um, so that length will give me just enough slack to go to a larger uh, sprocket at the back if I need to but not too much slack. So I've got a decent quality chain splitter here. If you've ever, ever tried to do this job with a poor quality tool then you've probably suffered from all sorts of breakages of the tool, so this is the right tool for the job. Okay, that pin came out without too much effort. It's a rather worryingly Little effort to be honest, but let's hope all's well and I'll put the missing link back in. For the slack part of the chain, the return part, I'm not going to use idlers, I'm just going to use PTFE rests. So this is the sort of thing that I mean. On one of my mountain bikes the slack part of the chain runs over this plastic support. So it takes the slack out of the chain, but because there's no tension in this part of the chain, the fact that there's not a 
cog or a sprocket there, doesn't really matter. The latest thing to arrive is this strip of PTFE sheet. I'm going to cut a bit off and use it to line the edge of this chain guide. Next time I'm going to be looking at the handlebars and the steering uh, because I've been doing some work on that in the background. Um, but in the meantime, don't forget to leave any comments or questions down below if you've got any. Uh, like the channel and subscribe and hit the notification bell.